Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online Guide video with me, Sherman. Today guys, we're going to be going over the Warden class and its passives, active abilities, and ultimate abilities, and how they play into your character design depending on which role you choose and different things like that. We're going to go over the class skills basically, <coughs> talking about the active skills, the passive skills, and the ultimate abilities. And in doing so, you'll see what I mean by the different roles. <clears throat> the Warden, by chance, uh, <laughs> first of all, the Warden was the first class that they ever introduced to the game. The, after the base game was launched, this was the first class they, they added uh, to the game after that. And it was the first one that they ever dedicated skill lines to specific role types. So let's go ahead and get in here and take a look at the class lines. So we have Animal Companion, which is your damage dealer line primarily. You have Green Balance, which is primarily your healer line, and then you have Winner's Embrace, which is primarily your tank line. Now, they did do this with the Necromancer as well, and some of the other classes reflect this as well, if you look at them. Like, if you look at the Dragon Knight, it's primary first tree, Ardent Flame is damage dealer, its second tree is uh, the Dragon, whatever. It's more tank orientated, and then the third tree is more support orientated. So you have the three lines there, and it's represented that way. Just like with Templar, you can look at the middle line as the dam magic damage dealer line. And then the front first line, Adric Spear, can be a cross between tank and damage dealer. And then the third line is definitely healer line with the way it's set up. Each class has its own definition of how roles work based on skills and abilities. But the Warden and the Necromancer got dedicated to showing that in their class setup. So with this... Uh, guide video I'm going to be going over the passive abilities first then the active abilities then the ultimates of each skill line we are going to start with the animal companion line since it is the first one in the warden's class so starting with the passives we have bond with nature when <coughs> which when one of your animal companions is killed or unsummoned you restore X amount of health it's 1260 on the second point and any time that you do sacrifice a pet or a pet dies or is unsummoned, you will heal yourself. And that means you will proc another passive you have. So I'll get to that in a, when we get there. Moving on to the next one, we have Savage Beast. This one, when you cast an Animal Companion ability, you are in combat. While you are in combat, you generate four ultimate. This can happen every eight seconds. So every eight seconds that you cast one of these abilities, you will get four ultimate. The next one we have is called Flourish. This one increases your magic and stam recovery by 12% if an animal companion ability is slotted. A lot of times people, uh, doesn't matter what you're playing, tank healer or damage dealer will always slot one of these abilities on both bars so you can get that advantage of having that 12% stam and mag recovery. Moving on to Advanced Species. Now this one increases your damage done by 3% for each animal companion ability slotted. This is where I was saying like this tree is definitely dedicated more to damage dealers, whether magic or stamina. One, they give you the higher recovery rates. Two, they give you this higher damage output for having these slotted on each bar. Savage Beast gives you ultimate and then Nature's Bond gives you that um, health when you summon one of these. And most of the time, it's going to come from your dive, your scorch, or your uh, swarm abilities, where you're going to get that heal from. All right, now that I've gone over the passives, let's go ahead and talk about the active ability, starting with the first one, dive. So dive, you command a cliff racer to dive bomb an enemy dealing X amount of magic damage. Now the first initiation or initial version of this skill is a magic ability, and it morphs into both a stamina and magic ability both of them offering different damage types so this is really good this is a really effective damage skill that you can use up close or at ranged now talking about both the morphs the first one is the stamina morph and it costs stamina instead of magica now you can see it says the role for this is damage dealer anyone can use it it just means that its primary primary use is for damage um, so it will do damage now this one converts to a stamina ability and deals physical damage with a reduced stamina cost. The other one, and that's Cutting Dive, the other one is called Screaming Cliff Racer. 
This one deals more damage based on how far away the enemy is. So the further away you are, it can deal up to 15% more damage based on how far away the enemy is. So it's really nice. <clears throat> and it has a range of 28 meters, by the way. Both, all, all three morphs of this does. Or three versions, I should say. So the next one we have here is called Scorch. Now Scorch is a very interesting one. Basically you summon a, a group of shulks out of the ground in front of you and they, they come up in a wave uh, in a 20 meter radius in front of you and seven meters wide is what they reach. It has a three second duration. That means it takes, it's an instant cast, but it takes three seconds for it to fire off. And when it does, it deals an immense amount of magic damage to all enemies in that line. So any enemy that's standing in the line is going to take a ton of damage. And it, and it doesn't matter whether this is a Stamina Morph or Magic Morph. It will deal a lot of damage. So, <clears throat> moving on now to the different Morphs of Scorch. And there is two, both a Magicka and a Stamina version. The Stamina version, Subterranean Assault. This one stir up the ground of Shulks and attack after three seconds, dealing X amount of poison damage to the enemy in front of you. Enemies damage are afflicted with major fracture, reducing their physical resistance by 5,280 for six seconds. Now, the damage is applied first before the debuff. So they will take the damage first before they get the debuff. Just letting you know. So if you fire this, it will apply that fracture, but it applies the damage first. I've, I've tested it a million times. <laughs> And that's how it works. Moving on to the other one from Subterranean Assault, uh, which does the fracture. The other one do applies Major Breach instead. So this one reduces the enemy's spell resistance by 5,280, and it does magic damage. And it's still a magicka-based skill. And it's the, both of them 20 meters by 7 meters, as you can see. And the one just offers physical penetration, one offers spell penetration. And they still do the same amount of damage either way. Depending on what your Max Magicka stamina looks like will depend on how much of damage it does. Alright, moving on to the next ability, Swarm. <clears throat> and I, I will let you guys know this. You can use Swarm even if you're playing a stamina-based DPS. You can still use Swarm and it can be a very effective skill if you have the right amount of Magicka to your character. Swarm is actually probably one of the best dots that the Warden has. Because you unleash a swarm of Fletcher Flies to relentlessly attack an enemy, dealing X amount of magic damage over 10 seconds. This is why it's such a powerful dot, is it deals damage over 10 seconds, and it can deal a lot of damage. If you have the right amount of magic and spell damage. Alright, so it has two morphs. Both of them are Magicka. The first one is called Fletcher Inflex uh, Infection. <clears throat> this is more... I, I use this more for when I'm playing like a stamina-based character. And the reason why is every cast, second cast of this ability, it deals 50% increased damage. It still does the damage over time. And then it does that increased damage when you cast it a second time. So if I'm doing a rotation, when I do my second rotation, I'm getting a, a stronger damage output from this. The next one is called Growing Swarm, and this is one I use for a lot of Magicka DPS. Sometimes Stamina DPS, it just depends, because if I want that to spread to other enemies, I will use it for that. Now, uh, the Growing Swarm, what it does is when you cast it, it spreads. So it'll do damage for 10 seconds to the initial mob, and if the mob dies or whatever before the damage is done, it will still spread. So when this ability ends, the Fletcher flies in fact up to six new targets, near the enemy and they do the same amount of damage over time to those new targets. So if you do say 15,000 damage over 10 seconds with this on a spellcaster, that means when it spreads it's going to do 15,000 damage over 10 seconds to other creatures, to six other mobs. That's why it's such a, it can be such a powerful dot. All right. The next ability is called Betty Netch. Now, Betty Netch is a really interesting one. When you summon this, basically it'll restore X amount of resources over 24 seconds and grants you major sorcery, increasing your spell damage by 20%. Now, this is the initial more uh, initial version of it. Now, that X amount it gives you does grow in strength based on the rank and the morph. So it has two morphs. It has one called Blue Betty, which now 
whenever you summon the, 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 the Betty Niche, it not only does it give you that major sorcery and the resources over a larger amount of resources over 24 seconds, it also removes one negative effect. And remember, the Betty Niche, or the Blue Betty, is free cast. It doesn't cost you any resources. You can cast as many times as you want. So this one you could sit there and cast at 100 times to remove 100 um, negative debuffs on you. All right. The next one is called Bull Niche. Now this one you call a Bull Niche to your side and it restores stamina over 24 seconds and gives you major sorcery and major brutality, increasing both spell and weapon damage by 20%. This is really good for those people who like to play um, more versatile roles in damage. What I call a versatile role is somebody who plays more hybrid and wants to take advantage of both weapon and spell damage because you can really do that well with this. <coughs> All right, moving on to the next one. It is called Falcon's Swiftness. Now, this one is a magic ability. Every ability you get with your classes, by the way, are going to be magicka-based on the active abilities until you get your morphs. Most of them then will morph into a stamina-based and a magicka-based, depending on the, the class and the skill and everything. So Falcon's Swiftness. Invoke the Spirit of Agility to gain major... Expedition for six seconds increasing your movement speed by 30% now This is the only skill in the game that gives you six seconds of major expedition Most of the others give you three to four seconds. So this is really powerful for the warden And it works great in PvP and in PvE if you want to move around really fast All right on to the two morphs the first one being deceptive predator while slotted, you gain minor evasion, reducing the damage you take from area attacks by 10%. This one a lot of people don't use. I've tested it. It works out really well, especially if you're running dual daggers. Um, because if you have blade cloak running, this will also apply that minor um, or major evasion, giving you 25% damage. So you get 35% damage reduction from area of effect attacks. So it's really nice for that, for area attacks. Uh, and area attacks, if you guys don't know, are things like Fletcher Flies would be considered an area attack on the second morph, but it's it still considered a damage over time effect. So, but that's what area of effect spells are. Is there, 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 are, there are spells that cover an area of effect. So it's like um, Ritual of Retribution, Wall of Elements, those are area of effect abilities, and that's where this this damage reduction comes from so moving on to the next one we have bird of prey so this one you do the same thing you get the major expedition but now while slotted you gain minor berserk increasing your damage done by eight percent really nice uh, ability and morph <clears throat> all right so the next one we're going to talk about is the feral guardian our ultimate ability and this is actually really probably one of the coolest abilities that any class gets because it is an ultimate permanent pet so when you cast this you uh, rouse a grizzly to permanently fight by your side the grizzly swipes at enemies dealing x amount of magic damage and sometimes swipes all enemies in front of it dealing x amount of damage and stunning them for two seconds once summoned you can activate the guardian's wrath uh, for 75 ultimate causing the grizzly to maul the enemy for X amount of magic damage and deals 100% more damage when enemies are below 25% health. This is also the warden execute. This thing can do a crazy ton of damage. Now this does have two morphs and you got to remember ultimates cost ultimate to cast. So you, you have to earn ultimate and you earn that by doing uh, abilities or getting minor heroes and major heroism or pretty much just activating any ability with light attacks weaving, you'll generate a lot of ultimate really quick. All right, so moving on to the two morphs, the first one being the Eternal Guardian. Now this one, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna read the bottom line here because that's a lot of stuff to read, but it pretty much does everything the first uh, version does. This one though, at once every minute, the Grizzly respawns when killed. So if it dies within a minute of being summoned, it will respawn automatically free of charge you don't have to recast it it'll recast itself but it is a magic damage based pet so it deals magic damage so now you got to remember this because a lot of people don't realize that even though it deals magic damage it's still based off of your max stat 
your, your highest offensive stat, whether that be stamina or magicka, weapon or spell damage, it's going to be based off of that. So if you have high stamina with high weapon damage, the magic damage is going to be based off that. But in order for the magic damage to do the most damage, you've got to have good spell penetration. So that can be one of the things that offsets it, but it is a very cool pet. The next one is called Wild Guardian. Now this one increases the damage and converts to a physical damage ability. So it converts from doing magic damage to physical damage and the damage it does is greater. So that means this one can do more damage except for when this one dies you have to resummon it. And they both look different when you use them. So like if you summon the base pet it looks like just a regular bear with glowing eyes. Same with this one. This one will have symbols on its side, so it's pretty cool. Now we're going to move on to Green Balance, which is the Healer's Tree, starting with the first one, Accelerated Growth. This one, when you heal yourself or an ally under 40% health with a Green Balance ability, you gain Major Mending, increasing your healing done by 25% for 3 seconds. A lot of people don't even see themselves getting this when it happens. But a lot of people do get this, and it, including damage dealers, because any time that you heal, in or you summon a creature that doesn't last, it, it summons and then unsummons, you heal yourself. So even if you're below 40% health, you're going to heal yourself and get that major mending. The next one is called Nature's Gift. Now when you heal an ally with a green balance ability, you gain 250 magicka or stamina, whichever resource pool is lower. This effect can occur once every second. The nice thing about this is, and this is what I love about it, is I play a lot of hybrid wardens. So I play something called the Druid Warden, and it's a hybrid Stam Magicka healer. And it will um, always constantly, it's giving me Magicka back whenever I heal anyone. So that, that little bit of Magicka gives me really good resources. But I'm also using the Bull Match, which gives me stamina resources back all the time. And it increases my weapon and spell damage. This one gives me those resources back, and this can happen every second. So I do a lot of heal over time abilities. I use something called Vigor, and every time it procs a heal, it gives me Magicka back. So it's really nice. Um, Emerald Moss, this is the next one. Increase your healing done with green balance abilities by 2% for each green balance ability you have slotted. On my healer, on the front bar, I run... Um, two of the, these abilities. On the back bar I run two of these abilities. So I get 6% or I get 4% I think it is, yeah, 4% more healing done on both bars, even as the Stamina Magicka Hybrid. And I don't use the Resto Staff at all. I don't need to. That's the nice thing about Warden. They have enough heals that they can actually get away with healing without a Resto Staff. <laughs> Moving on to the next one, we have Maturation. Now this one, when you activate a heal on yourself or an ally, you grant the target minor toughness increasing their max health by 10 percent for 20 seconds now it doesn't activate only on you when you cast a heal it casts it on everyone around you all at once so if i were to cast vigor which is a alliance war skill right here and i cast this this covers a 10 meter radius around me now the morph i use for this i'm going to show you guys is called echoing vigor this is a 15 meter ra radius around me and I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like when I cast this. You see how big that circle is that it reaches out? That's the area of effect that it gets. So everyone in that area gets that increased 10% max health every time I cast this. And it lasts for 20 seconds. <clears throat> so that's the reason why I like playing the Warden character I do. Because he's such a great group support, but he's also a great healer. Alright, moving on to the active skills. The first skill being Fungal Growth. Now this is a really cool ability. It is a cone heal. So it reaches 20 meters and I will go ahead and I want to show this because a lot of people don't understand what a cone heal is. So when I cast this, you'll see that I do, you'll see like the, this weird cone appear in front of me of a green wave or blue wave. That's the whole area. That's 20 meters in that cone, and everyone standing in that cone is going to get healed no matter what. <laughs> so this fungal growth, see the large area of mushrooms in front of you healing you and your allies for X amount of health. And it's a burst heal, and it's a very powerful one. Now it does have two morphs, 
The first one being enchanted growth, and this one, um, you do the heal, and then any target healed gains minor intellect and minor endurance, increasing their max ma their magicka and stam recovery by 10% for 20 seconds. So if I cast this as the magicka morph, I get that minor intellect, minor endurance, which is really great. It does cost magicka though. I use the other one though because it's soothing spores, and this one costs stamina, has a 20 meter range also, and it is for the healer roll, as you can see. But this one now heals for 15% more on allies that are within 8 meters of you. So the closer I am, the better healing they get. And as a stamina healer, you're up close. All right, moving on to the next ability, we get Healing Seed. Now, Healing Seed itself is a really cool ability. You summon a field of flowers which bloom after six seconds, healing you and allies in the area for X amount of health. An ally within the field can activate the harvest synergy, healing for X amount of health over five seconds. Now, <clears throat> basically you cast this and it's got a duration of six seconds and it will, it'll, it'll pop and it'll heal everyone. And then an ally within the field can activate the synergy, harvest, um, the harvest synergy which heals for x amount of health over five seconds only to them though to those who activate the synergy now this does have two morphs and it has really two really good morphs actually the first morph is called budding seeds this ability can now activate a second time to instantly trigger the heal so when you cast it it'll do the field and when while the field grows you can activate this ability again to cause it to instantly bloom which will cause the heal and it still has the harvest synergy so this one I'll, I'll just show you guys um, what this one no I won't I won't show you that <laughs> um, but this one basically when you cast it you can press the button again and it'll automatically activate it the next one is called corrupting pollen now this is one of the abilities I love to use but not just in PvP where a lot of people like to use it I like to use this in PvE as well depending on the situation. There's some areas of the game where major file comes in real handy. So what this one does is it still does the six seconds and then the heal, but enemies who enter the field for the duration of that six seconds and the eight meter radius around are afflicted with ma major defile, reducing their healing received by 30%. And then an ally within the field can activate the harvest synergy, <coughs> healing for X amount over five seconds. The nice thing is, is that this puts that major defile on the on a boss or something, especially one like in Dire Frost Keep at the end that has that really powerful uh, siphoning ability where they'll siphon life from somebody. This helps keep that at bay. And I can keep this applied to her nonstop. It's also super cheap. The next ability we have is called Living Vines. This is another heal. So this one is, covers an area by 28 by 12 meters, and it basically what it does is grow vines to embrace you and the lowest health ally in front of you for 10 seconds. The vines heal the target for X amount of health each time they take damage. The effect can occur once every 0.9 seconds, and that's on the initial version. There is two morphs, the first one being leeching vines. Now what it does is it still does the heal every time you take damage, but the leeching vines also applies minor lifesteal to enemies that damage the target for 10 seconds, healing you and your allies for 600 health every second when damaging that enemy. And then the other one is called Living Trellis. So this one does the same thing as the normal one, but when the vines expire, they heal the target for an additional X amount of health. So it applies for 10 seconds, and then after a little bit, it'll come off, and it'll do 10 seconds. Boom, another heal. The next one is one of my favorite abilities in the healer line, and that is called Lotus Flower. So this one, you enhance yourself, or in, embrace the Lotus Blessing, causing your light attacks to restore X amount of health, and your fully charged heavy attacks to restore X amount of health to you and nearby allies for 20 seconds. And then it has two morphs, the first one being Green Lotus, and this one, basically, what it does is it grants weapon critical rating, which is really nice, and allows you for greater weapon critical while it's up, so it allows for greater healing, crit chance, and it allows for greater healing on your allies. 
The other one is called Lotus Blossom. This one grants major prophecy, increasing spell critical rating by um, for 20 seconds, along with the healing from the light and heavy attacks. So they both offer you a benefit. One offers you magic-based damage crit, and one offers you stamina-based crit. And this really helps out, especially if you're using the fungal growth stamina morph with vigor. This will be an amazing benefit to you as a stamina based healer like hybrid healer all right moving on to the final ability we have nature's grasp Nat nature's grasp you launch a vine to swing yourself to an ally healing them for x amount over 10 seconds you gain three ultimate when the effect completes if you are in combat the ability scales with your highest offensive stats so this will work whether you're using stamina or magica and this is what also plays into them being really good stamina healers it does have two morphs, the first one being Bursting Vines. This one, launch a vine and swing to an ally and instantly heal them for X amount. Gain 10 ultimate when healing an ally under 60% health. While you are in combat, this effect can occur once every 4 seconds. And this ability scales with your highest offensive stat. And it does allow you to move faster. So, the next one is called Nature's Embrace. Now this one, you launch, your, uh, launch a vine to swing yourself to an ally, healing you and them for X amount of health over 10 seconds, and you gain three ultimate. Each of these effects complete if, the, if you are in combat, or gain three ultimate when each of these effects complete. And yeah, we get it. Um, this ability scales with your highest effects of stamina. I use this a lot now on my stamina healer. It's awesome. And that is the active abilities and we're going to jump on to the ultimate which is called scheduled grove now this one swell a healing forest at the target location instantly healing the most injured friendly target for x amount of health the forest continues to heal you and your allies in the area for x amount every second for six seconds and it does have two morphs of course and it does cost ultimate guys the bear doesn't cost ultimate until you activate its special ability so moving on to the two morphs, starting with the first one, we have Enchanted Forest. This is my preferred use one. Basically, it does the same thing, but now you generate 20 ultimate if the initial heal is used on a friendly target under 50% health. So I, I tend to savor this and, and use it as an oh crap button um, on my stamina healer. So that way I get that 20 ultimate. So that way I get a quicker, quicker um, ability to gain it again to reapply it. The next ability or morph is called Healing Thicket, and this one, um, the healing over time will continue to heal you and your allies after leaving the area. So even if you leave the circle, which is 8 meters in radius, you'll continue to heal for 4 seconds after leaving it. Alright, and that is it for the Green Balance Tree. Now we're going to jump over to Winter's Embrace, but before I do, I'm going to take myself out of combat. <clears throat> Alright, so in Winter's Embrace... Of course, we are going to start with the passive ability, starting with the first one, Glacier, Glacial Presence. So this one, increase your chance of applying chilled status effects, or chilled to enemies, sorry, with Winner's Embrace abilities by 200%. So this means any one of these abilities that does damage has a greater chance of applying chilled, and it, there is only two or three abilities that apply chilled status effects, so we we'll have that chance. The next one is called Frozen Armor. This one increases your physical and spell resistance by X amount for each winner's Embrace ability slotted. So the more abilities of these you have slotted on your bar, the higher resistances you get. And then you have Icy Aura. Icy Aura reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you by four, or 15%. This also plays really well with warden, or with uh, Red Guards. Red Guards get another 15%. And if you're using light armor, you can get another 20%. So you can actually get a really high reduced snare cost if you're playing a Red Guard Ice Warden. Next up, we have Piercing Cold. And this one will give you increased Magicka and Frost damage by 6%. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize what this does for you. So if you put enough points into your champion points, you can actually get this as high as 20% increase in your magic and frost damage but in order to do that you have to get the 14 percent crit capability or 14 percent damage capabilities in that champion section of your cp so that is the elemental uh expert and in order to get that high to get a 14 percent you have to have 75 points in here 
And if you have 75 points, you will get 14%, and that means you can get a 20% increase into magic damage and your frost damage. And if you didn't know, magic damage is pretty much every ability you have the outside of, or in the animal companion tree, outside of the frost tree, or when it's embrace. Everything outside of this does magic damage. So everything in your animal companion tree does magic damage. And you're going to get 6% more damage based on that. So it's really nice. All right, now that I've gone over those passives, we're gonna talk about the active ability, starting with the first one, which is called Frost Cloak. Now this is a really cool ability because it's the only ability in the game that applies major, uh, major resolve and major ward to multiple targets in an eight meter radius. So this one will apply major ward, major resolve, which increases spell and physical resist by 5,280 for 20 seconds to anyone in an eight meter radius around you. It does have two morphs, the first one being called Expansive Frost Cloak. This expands the radius of this to 28 meters, and it lasts 21 seconds instead of 20 seconds. I think it goes to 24 at the max rank, um, but I'd have to take it to find out. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but it is a very powerful defensive buff for your group. I like to use this on my, my healer warden because I love to give my people that greater survivability. <laughs> Sorry, clearing my nostrils. Moving on to the next morph, we have Ice Fortress, and this one basically does the same thing, but now it still covers the 8 meter radius and lasts for 24 seconds or whatever, but now, <coughs> now you gain major or minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 8% for 21 seconds while it's active. So for the whole duration, you get major or minor protection. This is the only class that gets this long of minor protection applied to it it's nice moving on to the next board uh, next ability it is called impaling shards and this one conjure icy shards around you that skewer enemies in the area dealing X amount of frost damage every second for 12 seconds enemies hit are overcome with bitter cold reducing their movement speed by 30% for three seconds now this is one of those abilities that can get that chilled status effect and if it does apply the chilled status effect it is really good Damage done is based on your max health and the higher chance to to apply a chilled status effect. So this one does have a greater chance of applying that chilled status effect even with the other morph or with the other passive. Now it does have two morphs. The first one being grippling, uh, gripping shards. So this one now what it does is it does the damage, <coughs> but it also immobilizes the enemies for three seconds. So this one reduces the cost and immobilizes the enemies around you when cast. Now this is an AoE around you, and it's still based off your max health. The other one is called Winner's Revenge. This one is a Magicka-based ability still, but it is based off of your max Magicka and your spell damage instead of your um, max health. And it casts at the target location you want it cast at. It still does the damage over time, it still um, has, a, has the slow movement speed, and it has a higher chance of applying chilled status effect. It does not immobilize, though. <coughs> Moving on to the next ability, we have Arctic Wind. Now, this is an interesting, was a really interesting ability before they changed it, and it's still an interesting ability, but here's what it does. You envelop yourself in winter winds, instantly healing for X amount of health, for an, and for an additional X amount of health every two seconds for 10 seconds, this ability scales with your max health. This is why this is more of a tank line than it is anything else, because most of the abilities are based off your max health or they're based off of frost damage kind of capabilities, which is really CC orientated. But this is really good because of the heal and how it works. Now, you have two morphs. You have Polar Wind, which does the same thing it did before, but now it will also heal an ally nearby for X amount of health on cast. So it will heal you and somebody else on cast, and then it continues to heal you over 10 seconds. The next one is called Arctic Blast, and this is the one that everyone is frustrated with and does not like. I'm not happy with the change, but hey, it's just me. So this one sends forth a bl blast of arctic cold, stunning a target for three seconds, and you have to be targeting them in order for this to target them, and this thing moves like super slow. But it does have a 28 meter range, and it will chase the enemy. Um, a lot of people who can get away from it, 
and a portion of the winds envelops you instantly healing you and then additionally healing you over to, um, 10 seconds every two seconds and it scales off your max health the next ability is called crystallized shield and this is a really cool ability actually so this one you throw up three three shields around you ice shields that spin around you and they absorb projectile damage and they can absorb up to three different projectiles for x amount of damage in total each time you absorb a projectile you restore magicka now it has two morphs the first morph being crystallized slab this is my favorite of the two this one does the absorption of the damage from three projectiles but it also each time it absorbs it restores magicka and it launches an icy bolt back at the enemy and this is like instantaneous casting back um that it does this and it does frost damage so i really like this one but the next one is just as good the next one is called shimmering shield this does the same thing but now when you when you absorb a projectile you get minor or major heroism for six seconds granting you three ultimate every 1.5 seconds now the thing you have to understand is every time you absorb a projectile you will get this major heroism so if you absorb three projectiles that means the six seconds gets reapplied each time you absorb a projectile. So if you absorb one every second, that means you will actually get eight or nine seconds of my major heroism. <clears throat> All right, moving on to the next ability, Frozen Gate. And this is a really fun one if you know how to use it. So this one, summon an ancient portal which arms after 1.5 seconds and lasts for 30 seconds. When triggered, the enemy is teleported to you and immobilized for 3 seconds and dealt X amount of frost damage. You have it up to you can have up to 3 frozen gates active at a time. Now this does have two morphs, the first one being frozen device. This one teleported enemies have their damage done or have their damage done reduced. So this one, they get major maim applied to them for four seconds, which reduces their damage by 30% for those four seconds. The other one is called Frozen Retreat. And this one, you summon the portal and it will, it'll active when triggered, it'll tell <coughs> the enemy, an enemy is teleported to you and immobilized for three seconds, dealing X amount of frost damage. An ally in the portal can activate icy escape synergy, teleporting them to you and granting major expedition, increasing their movement speed by 30% for, for eight seconds. You can have up to three frozen retreats active at a time. I like this one, especially for group support, because I'll put this out even as a, a healer, I'll put this out and let enemies activate it, and then I can let my allies activate the synergy to give them resources back, but it also brings them to me, and they get that major expedition, which allows them to move around more effectively and stay in combat better. And I use this a lot, especially in, in, in dungeons where adds come in at long range, like, say, Vaults of Madness. I'll put these out where the adds spawn. It'll bring them to me. And if one of my allies is out by the ads fighting them, they can activate the thing and come right back to where the boss is and help kill the boss quicker. So it's a nice, it's a nice ad clearing tool. So <clears throat> just saying. And that is it for the active abilities for the winners of Braceline. Now we're going to move on to the ultimate, which is my favorite ultimate in the game by far, and it is called Sleet Storm. This one, you twist a violent storm around you, dealing X amount of frost damage every second for 8 seconds to enemies around you and reducing their movement speed by 40%. You and nearby allies within this 10 meter radius gain major protection, reducing your damage taken by 30%. You want to you watch damage reduction happen? Use this ability. Because this will just make everyone in your group have a lot of damage mitigation. And it's really hard to kill you when you have this up. It does cost 200 ultimate. My favorite race to use this with is the Imperial. <laughs> in, in heavy armor. Because the reason why is if you have an Imperial in heavy armor, they get 3% reduced ultimate cost. And then on top of that, they get 2% extra stam cost reduction and magicka cost reduction on top of the three percent they get baseline so they get six or five percent magicka reduced cost five percent stamina reduced cost and then they get the the three percent reduced ultimate cost which is awesome and if you're using it with a, a really great combination and just to let you guys in on this secret take akavari dragon guard with um ice heart or not ice yeah ice heart monster set 
and then take the uh, Ascent like Hunting's Rage or what I like to use is the um, Kvetch's Gladiator set with it and I will use Kvetch's Gladiator, Ice Heart, and that Akavari Dragon Guard so I get that even greater reduced ultimate cost and this thing costs me uh, what is it? It is 18% cheaper. So it's like 160 something ultimate. I can get this off like crazy um, because I will be using Shimmering Shield also. And I will be using a heal to get the green balance ultimate of uh, this thing. Is it this one? No, it's, it's not the green balance. It's Animal Companion, Savage Beast. I will be using this also so I can get the the ultimate gen and trust me I can keep this up all day long I can keep up northern wind with a with a with a, a uh, imperial it's very powerful all right so it has two morphs the first one being northern storm if you guys haven't seen my northern wind ability or northern wind build that's what it's based around is this ability so this one you twist a violent storm around you dealing X amount of frost damage every one second for eight seconds and enemies uh, in the area get reduced movement speed by 40% and you get the major, uh, major protection for the duration. But while slotted, your max magic is increased by 8%. So I will put this on one bar. And then on my back bar, I always put inner light. Because inner light also gives me higher spell crit when I'm on the back bar. And then when I'm on the front bar, I have this, which is giving me that greater max magicka. And it works out really well. <clears throat> the next ability is called Permafrost. Now this one... Damaging an enemy in the storm three times will stun them for three seconds. It basically still does the damage, it does the reduced movement speed, and it does the major protection. But this time when it procs three times, or hits an enemy three times, it will stun them for three seconds. And that's if they don't have <coughs> CC immunity. And that is it for the Winner's Embrace skill line and the class itself, the Warden. That is every ability, passive, active, and ultimate for the class and you can go through these yourselves and look at them to find the type of skills and abilities you like to use for your character and their design and the way you like to play them personally I have different tools I like to use in different situations with different roles with different class or different builds and they're all different so I have hundreds of different options and it's really cool I like having that and I love playing all the different classes in this game because they give you such a universal type of play style. But that's it for this video, guys. And I hope you guys liked it. And I hope it was helpful. And if it was, you guys know what's coming next. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.